Boyle here, book 3, chapter 16, Devil in the Details. You've snuck in Avernese Palace in search of Godfrey, but Bradshaw and Isabella have found you first. Hey, long time no see. You know you're not welcome here. Not that that's ever stopped you or your friends. We try our best. I assume your reason for coming here is as tiresome as ever. Depending on your next move, it can be a lot worse than that. We hope it doesn't come to that. Listen, I know we've never seen eye to eye, but Godfrey has information that'll help us take Bartholomew Balmont down. We need to question him. You broke into our palacy, or palace, for Godfrey? That man assassinated an Avernese citizen. He's our prisoner. That citizen was my mother and Cordonia's queen. He's coming with us. He isn't going anywhere with you. You told the whole world about my husband's children and his affair. You've ruined our reputation. Maybe you shouldn't have tried to marry off our daughter against her will. Oh, why would we do what you say? We're up to our necks in unrest because of you. I know you hate me, but... Mm. Bartholomew will be even worse for Avernul if he has the throne. He's power-hungry. He'll come for af after Avernul next. Let him try. Our military will protect us. The country, yes. But will they protect whoever sits on the throne? Isabel and Bratch all look at each other, taking a long moment to weigh their options. Fine. Take the prisoner. But don't ever set foot in our kingdom again. Trust me, I want nothing more. Bratch on Isabella, step aside and let you continue on your way to the prison cells. Freedom! In the same cell where you last saw him all those months ago, you find Godfrey on his bed reading a book. Queen Riley? Hmm, nice outfit. And beard? Actually, the beard kind of fits him. Nice haircut, too. After you escape, I thought you'd be done with Avenue. The circumstances by the name of Bartholomew brought me back. We want your help taking him down. This is rich, me help you. I'd sooner languish in this cell. Hmm, excuse me. Last time I found you, you were practically begging me to drag you out of the cell. This was before your aid hinged on betraying my orc associate. There's no reason to protect him. We already know you. he helped you kill Queen Eleanor. We just need proof. A hint of surprise flashes across Godfrey's eyes as he pauses, picking his next words carefully. You've always been quite capable of finding proof on your own. Then... How would you like to move cells to somewhere more Cordonian? Oh, certainly. Just give me a five-star suite with a seaside view and no locks on the doors. Don't play with us, Godfrey. You had no problem taking down a ruler when it was my mother. It wasn't personal. Your mother simply tried to extend her influence where she didn't, shouldn't have. That's a fancy way to say she had the nerve to threaten your own power. If you say so. You monster, she was your queen. She was pregnant. Liam clenches his fists around the bar until his knuckles turn white. You put a hand on his shoulder, he glares at Godfrey for a long moment before turning away. Doesn't Cordonia mean anything to you? I have sacrificed everything for it. Then help us protect it from Bartholomew. He's power hungry, and if he gets the throne, he's going to abuse the power for personal gain. You have to know that. At your estate, we saw the evidence of your falling out with him. We had our differences. Bartholomew was always open to unorthodox methods to reach his goals. But he wanted to stop tyranny. Uh, think about what he was capable of back then. Are you really surprised to hear what he's become? We found old or odd things in his lodge. Secret correspondence, strange symbols, cryptic notes. Strange symbols? Show Godfrey an image of the mysterious sigil. There's a flash of recognition in his eyes, immediately followed by a frown. Do you recognize it? What does it mean? Suffice it to say, this means Bartholomew is willing to compromise himself for the throne. And then he's willing to go to dangerous lengths, further than I ever would dare. Godfrey strokes his beard and thought, his 
stubborn resolve just beginning to waver. Oh, look, you obviously have hesitations. Listen to Riley. Listen. Yeah, we're listening, duh. Bartholomew will be worse than what you feared Constantine would become. If you don't help us now, Bartholomew will become even more of a tyrant than Constantine ever could have been. I suppose he stopped being the man I called a friend a long time ago. Bartholomew has lost his way. Godfrey lets out a sign of resignation. Very well. I do have evidence of Bartholomew's crimes, but what do I get in return? I doubt I'm a free man. No. But you'll be transferred into Cordonian custody. It doesn't sound unpleasant. But I will want a cell with a window. A vision, cotton, bedding, access to a library, occasional walks around the prison. You'll get a cell in Cordonia, as Riley said. Final offer. This is your only chance to help us before Bartholomew is crown regent tomorrow. Fine. But if you want the information to take him down, I have to show you, not tell you. I'm coming with. Can we trust him? We have to, but you better not try anything, Godfrey. Otherwise, we'll give you a lifelong tour of Cordonia's medieval dungeons. Godfrey nods his assent, and Liam opens the prison cell. One more thing. I'll need my suit. What, you don't like the prisoner outfit? Return to your plane and settle for Cordonia shortly after you reach cruising altitude. Godfrey emerges from the back wearing his trademark suit. The plane is a bit modest, but compared to that sail, it's the height of luxury. Where can I peruse the in-flight wine selection? Your cell may be gone, but you're still a prisoner. We can always lock you in the bathroom. Oh, will you two stop it? It'll be difficult to hear both all of my secrets. If I'm locked behind the bathroom door. Then start talking. First off, your information was correct. Bartholomew was the conspirator in Queen Eleanor's assassination. But that hasn't been his only plot over the years. Bartholomew has spent decades making moves against the crown from the shadows. And nothing has traced back to him? All his maneuvering hinged on secret identities. Everyone believing he was in a coma, even his sons. The doctor never let us visit him. She always said it was for risk of his condition. I guess that was just another lie in his long list. Mm. He does that. What he needs to do for his ideas. Always has, always will. So Bartholomew's been part of multiple conspiracies. Mm. Guess he failed a lot at this whole power-grabbing thing. It only took me one try to con become a Cordanian power player, and I didn't even have to hurt anyone. Really, you're gonna brag. Your good fortune won't deter Bartholomew. No failure or setback will faze him. Then he won't mind if I add one more conspiracy to his list of failures. Well, we have Godfrey's testimony on our side now. Shouldn't that be enough to stop him? Bartholomew will manipulate whatever we throw at him. Especially if it's all we've got is a testimony of a criminal. We need hard evidence. Luckily for you, I've collected proof of Bartholomew's involvement. No trust among conspirators. Call it an insurance policy. I had to protect myself in case of Bartholomew ever turned against me. Then why didn't you use it against him when you were arrested? Bartholomew didn't betray me. You discovered me. Thus, even if I wanted it, you caught me before I could reach it. So, where is all this evidence? In an old safe house of mine. A lovely place hidden on the coast, well beyond Cordonia's borders. I wouldn't mind seeing it again before returning behind bars. And I wouldn't mind getting that evidence. I'm glad we're on the same page. I'll provide the pilot with the coordinates. And now, if that concludes this round of questioning, I'd like to enjoy having a window for the first time in months. You and your friends return to your seats as the plane tilts towards the next new coordinates. As Liam takes a seat next to you, your phone buzzes. Z -z -z. Hello, Riley. Amanda was so thrilled by your video message, she wanted to give you one of her own. Family? Aww, oh my gosh, baby girl. I've been so worried about you. About we, uh, couldn't be happier to see you. Mommy and Daddy. 
Yes, it's them. Now go on, bond with your family. A long time now, see you. Bond me home? Oh, we want to come home for you more than anything in the world, but we can't right now. But tomorrow, we'll be back. Promise. Yes, tell your plans over a phone call. And then we'll make up for all the time we missed together. Daddy, don't we? Mm, of course. We need to know if Princess Guinevere rescued the prince from the, with the help of her talking cat. And there'll be no more bad man to stop us. Yay! Speaking of the bad man, he lets the caretakers handle most of the work. And I've thoroughly vetted each one that deals with Amanda. They're up to the task of caring for someone as gifted as her. They're certainly better than if Bartholomew was personally caring for her. They will treat Amanda with care and respect or risk the fury of our Nabracus. Bowie! Oh god, no. Speaking of fury, we have to run before someone reports our call to the Batman. We have some things to take care of, too. If we're gonna beat the Batman, we'll see you soon, Amanda. And, um, when we're home, we'll give you lots of hugs and kisses. And that's a promise. <laughs> You've been so strong, and we're so proud of you. Bye-bye for now. Bye, Mommy. Bye, Daddy. You win the phone call and turn to Liam. I'm glad Amanda's keeping her spirits up, even though she's been through so much. I hate to, that she's not here with us, and that we have to leave her with him, but our girl is tough. If anyone can get through a few days with a piece of slime and make him regret it, our Amanda can. And we have our friends checking in on her, making sure she's safe. I hope they're getting along. Knowing her friends, they're probably having a great time with her. Even so, it must be a lot. I wonder what's going through Amanda's head right now. Oh, you just had to ask. Play this exclusive scene to see how Amanda's doing and experience her life in the palace. I wonder too. Now playing as Amanda, you sit in the makeshift playroom in the palace surrounded by a myriad of toys, but they don't interest you as much as your lovely, which you snuggle with tightly. Sure, hugging them, glad mommy saved you so we could be together. I know, I miss our parents too. I wish I had the power to win them back. There's not much good in being a princess if I can't get the one thing I want. Well, we need to think about our survival. If this goes on, we'll make new plans for nap time, dress time, food time, play time. We'll hold out until mommy and daddy come for us. They will always come when I need them. <laughs> Yo, why? I should make a gift for their return. Uh, but I've given them macaroni out before, and mommy didn't like it when it spilled on the floor. I, I, they left warnings though. I make them. I make one for them. You lay out a sheet of paper next to your crayons. I'll do all. Mommy and Daddy and me holding hands together. T Rex stomping Bartholomew. Lots of squiggles. <laughs> Listen. Listen, we get to choose the artistic future of this two year old. Anyway. T-Rex stopping Bartholomew. You draw your TX self gleefully laughing as Bartholomew is trapped under your knee your foot. That'll show the bad man. Good note. T-Rex is breathe fire too. You add in the flames of T-Rex retribution. Ta-da! This should make them happy. They love hanging my work on the fridge. Indeed. Now we wait. Though, even if we're trapped here, it's not all bad. Like the nice visitors who came to see me yesterday, they may not be my parents, but they make me happy. You smile up at the trio of friendly faces. I was so sorry Bartholomew took you away under our watch. I tried to have the poodles stop him, but they're emotionally support poodles, not guard poodles. At least you two never supported him. Uh, that was the one of the worst decisions I've ever made. 
Why is everyone sad? Was the bad man mean to them? Maybe they need snacks or milk. When I see how mommy plays with me, I, I should play with them and make them happy so they don't get fussy. Uh, what do you think she's saying? <laughs> yeah. I think she wants to play. Play. Uh, who do you want to play with, Amanda? The dog, screw all of you. Doggies! You run up and wrap your arms around Merlin and Morgana and excitedly lick your face. <laughs> They've accepted her into her, their pack as one of their own. Everyone laughs as you play. Is she a support daughter then instead of a guard daughter? Da! Hooray, we all feel better now. Mommy really has made some wonderful friends, even if they don't always know what to do with me. Later that day, the stabby lady kneels to you, kneels next to you, and gives instructions. Listen, young princess, I know things seem hard right now, but you're nearly at knife-wielding age. It's time you learned how to fight the bad man. Bad man? Don't show weakness, remember. If you can breathe, you can... Tears well in your eyes. I don't have to learn right now. Riley makes us look so much easier. Mommy back? No, not yet, but Mommy will be back soon. She's a special person who's never abandoned those she loves, including you. Yeah. Greed. We're both lucky to have her in our lives. Aww. I owe it to her to keep you safe until she's back, even if I can't quite comfort you. I've never heard her speak in such a soft voice. I think she's trying to be nice and make me feel better. Don't worry, stabby lady. <laughs> I will tell her mommy of all the nice things you said today. A Vivi and mommy friends? <laughs> yes, but don't go shouting that. If you mommy friends! <laughs> no, not you too. This should help you forget this entire conversation. Livy opens the door to reveal some of your fluffy friends. <laughs> yeah! I'm even making friends of my own. Juju! Beatty. You and Barty push trains along the floor. Toot toot! Look, man, the, the train goes poot poot! <laughs> Boy, he's so funny. But if my silly face mommy has taught me anything, it's that I'm funny too. Buddy? Uh, what sound does the train also make? Wanna see a funny face? What town? Okay, train. Train go! Uh. Toot toot! Listen, listen, she's two years old, Bar Barty. Just. There you go. I am so clever. Amanda, do you miss your mommy and daddy? Mommy and daddy? I miss my daddy when he goes gone too. But you and me are friends. Friends? You and Barty embrace each other. Just then the door to the playroom opens and Bartholomew and Bertrand enter. Kill them, kill them, ah! Oh, I mean, the bad man arrives. Collect your son, Bertrand. I'm sorry, Barty, but it's time to say goodbye to Amanda. We have to get ready for your piano lessons. Bye, Amanda. Bye. Run along, Barty. You'll no doubt see more of the royal princess when she begins her own tutoring regime. I don't like Batman. Mommy and Daddy were even mad at him before leaving. Thankfully, I don't see much of Batman. But on key, he forced the attempt to come close. As Barty pulls himself away from you, Bartholomew steps close to you. Too close. Quickly, bite his ankle. Oh, wait, we're not a dog. Yell in his face, throw a block at him, hide under the wing. Throw a block. Grab the letter B. Block and hurl it in the Bartharo hitting him right in the chest. Ah! Oh. <laughs> you fool. Ben Riley has left you in poor manners. I'm not surprised. 
Hey, Jantu, she's going through a tough time. Bertrand kneels down and returns the block to you. <laughs> I expect her to straighten out her behavior once I'm crowned. Bartholomew leaves. Sparty looks at you one more time as Bertrand escorts him out. My brother Dan is always with Bad now when we visit. He seems sad. Someone should give him a wubby. Why does she have perfect English when she's in her own thought process, but when she speaks out loud, it's wubby? Listen, don't ask such things, okay? Look back at the window. And we're doing our part to help us through this trying time. Especially you. I know we'll see mommy and daddy soon. I just wish I could send a message to them. If only to tell them one thing. Mommy and daddy, I love you both. It's been too long since I got to tell you about that. I hope I'll see you soon. Now playing as Riley. You snap back to your own thoughts as your plane begins to descend. Ah, oh, we're almost there. Let's find Godfrey's evidence and take Bartholomew down. After landing at a small secluded airport, you ride towards the coast. In style, of course, in a limo. Look at all the wine and alcohol and glasses. My quaint cottage will be waiting just around this hill. Do you think Bartholomew has someone watching the place? He doesn't know about it. I chose this place for its solitude, its isolation. There would be nary a soul around for miles. And before this backfire, just then, an open top jeep pulls up alongside your car, a group of partiers lounging in the back. Oh, for the love of Christ, I haven't missed your face. Get your party on, bruh! What were you saying about solitude and isolation? They must be lost. The jeep speeds ahead, your car falling around the hill. Where you come upon a large resort, vacationers pour in and out of the entrance, wearing flowing skirts, flowery shirts, and colorful jewelry. My cottage has been replaced by this behemoth. Godfrey? I don't care about your cottage. What about the evidence? The key to my daughter's safety was supposed to be in there. It's not like I hear the evidence under a rickety floorboard. I can afford nice things. Hmm. Things they uh, would have kept after turning your cottage into a beachside resort. I should hope so. That old mahogany bar was a pinnacle of class. I hid the evidence in a secret compartment in the wood. I've never been so invested in the survival of a bar before. Hey, Drake, you want to go for a drink? You and your group head into the resort where Hannah herds everyone into a boutique just inside the entrance. I was thinking if we're going to go around searching, we should blend in. Oh, for the lava. We are a bit overdressed for this occasion. Absolutely not. Don't worry, you're already blended in and that's one of the resort's angry old retirees. <clears throat> Liam and Drake emerge from the changing rooms. We're ready. Operation Blending as a go. Hey. Yes, our turn. Maxwell and Hannah quickly change. I'm so ready, bruh. Oh, they have a squid at the ready, do they? You're up, Riley. She is pretty. I like the choker. Nothing says casual resort like a big sun hat. Really a big sun hat. Oh, uh, God. Why does I... This, no, no, not saying it. Okay, the outfit seriously looks like a garbage. It just looks like something that you would wear to bed so your partner can unwrap you. Moving on! Moving on! Right now, ready to sleuth into style. I'll say, if we weren't on a mission to save our family and the kingdom, I'd ask you on a beachside date. But since we are on the clock... Now then, let's find this evidence. You step into the hotel lobby and follow Godfrey to a row of shops. This is the exact spot where the cabin used to be. The welcome mat would be right here. Godfrey stops next to a gift shop sign that says, Welcome! His face falls. Come on. We can't give up now. There must has to be something. The indignity of it. I wasn't even informed. And is it my lamp? They took my lamp! Okay, I have a question about Cordonia. How the hell did this become a mall if it's his land? Are you sure? If they kept your lamp, maybe they kept some of your other stuff too? 
You and your friends rush inside in search of the bar. Oh, that's my vintage vinyl player. And there's the handcrafted dining table. No, those are my fuzzy slippers. How could they pillage my cottage like this? Oh, I'm so glad your favorite hat rack survived all your crimes. You don't understand these these pieces were prices. Hmm. Ah, yes, yeah, priceless things from your second or third home. Hanging next to the knockoff tiki torches is the ending <laughs> your prized possession deserves. Godfrey sighs and walks away as you continue rummaging through the store's items. Touristy feathers. Stylish, but not what we need. Old compass, no. If only it pointed the way to the evidence. Oh, dragon plushie, get it for, get it for, come on. Wait a second, go back to the plushie. Why? It's soft. It's not exactly hiding anything. Exactly, it's soft. Cute dragon. Amanda would love it. You're right. It'd be a fierce protector to keep her safe from an evil king. It'd go well with her castle. Ding, ding, ding. You can already picture it protectively watching over the playroom. Watch it be like six feet tall. God damn it, I was close. It's about three feet tall. What do you say we get something to give Amanda when we save her from Bartholomew? Get Amanda the plushie. Amanda deserves something for enduring all of this. And she can't go wrong with a big plushie. You purchase the plushie and stow it for later, and then continue searching. Where the hell did we stow it up our ass and searching? Has anyone found any cabinets full of alcohol? Ah, uh, lots of cool resort stuff. And some of my antiques. But no sign of a mahogany bar. We have to keep searching. This can't be everything from the old cottage. I was chatting up the shop manager. She said the resort owner is a cheapskate who would never buy new furniture if there's perfectly good pieces just sitting around for the taking. So the resort might have repurposed the cottage's old furniture. We just have to find it. Then go find a bar, you idiots. Well, if I was a fancy bar, there's one place I'd be. You barge into the resort's penthouse room. When you find it occupied by one woman reclining on a chaise lounge, surrounded by seven men who attend to her every need. You don't look like room service. Where are then my steamed towels? I see you're living your best life here. But are there any mahogany bars in this room? Any of you boys know what she's talking about? Ah, uh, there's nothing here, but uh, there's a party going on uh, the mezzanine floor that said something about drinks and wooden bars. Thanks. You make your way down to the mezzanine floor to find a room that's been renovated to look like a ship's cabin where a crew of pirates mill around. A pirate cosplay party? I'm home. Mm, you can be Orlando Bloom with your squib. Arr, this is a private... Uh... I'm down here. I was gonna say pirate event. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> private event. Ye be best good reason for barging in, lest ye be walking the plank. Uh, yar. We be looking for lost treasure buried within a mahogany bar. Has anyone laid eyes or eye upon it? Nay, we only have an oak and bar full of rum. Only mahogany here is me peg leg. I heard scuttlebutt of strange happenings in the conference room. Best steer your search there. Uh, thanks. And I like your cosplay. Much appreciated, landlubber. Good luck on your treasure hunt. Hmm. This is where they store all the old characters. <laughs> you step into a conference room to find... Mother of pink bullshit my eyes. God, it burns. Find a person making a presentation in front of a captivated crowd. Uh, you heard of working from home? How about relationshiping from home? This new VR integrated product will revolutionize romance for the modern age. Oh, not to crash or pitch or anything, but has anyone seen the mahogany bar? Not here, but inside this revolutionary new product, the bar at the Tiki Pool can be at your fingerprint fingertips, along with your beautiful date. Uh, Tiki Bar sounds great. You and your friends make their way to the Tiki Bar, which sits at the edge of a large, overcrowded pool, but through all the people you see the bar. And it is 
That's the bar. That, how could they put it next to the water? Barbarians. Hmm, they could put it next to a volcano for all I care. Let's get it and grab the evidence. Just then, a woman approaches you, pointing at Godfrey. Excuse me, but this man is going to drag down the entire party with his very unchill vibes. Listen, Karen, get the fuck out of my way. Don't worry, I'll make up for uh, him with an extra chill party attire. All right, I dig it. I trust you because your style is on point. You and your friends begin pushing through the crowd of people, but the music suddenly changes, sending the partiers into a frenzy of cheering and fist bumping. Bruh, let's get this party started! Congo line! This book is killing me inside slowly. Oh no. The pool descends into chaos as partiers excitedly grab onto whoever they can find to form a Congo line, including your friends. Join us, bruh! Unhand me. Someone keep an eye on Godfrey, he could try to escape. My time has come. Remember me, my bros. <laughs> Godfrey and Maxwell disappear into the conga line as more partiers surround your friends. Shambling to the music, then two hands grab your shoulder. Bruh. I will succumb to the cult. Join my bros. Oh, I feel myself slipping, bruh. Congo line sounds rad, bruh. I swear to God, if I ever see this word ever again, I will end my own existence. Liam, grab my hand. We can still make it. Come on, it'll be fun. Uh, bruh. Fine, but I'm not saying it. You're f <laughs> <laughs> I can't with this book. Your friends assimilate into the cargo line which weaves its way around the pool and towards the bar. This is our stop. We gotta get our bar on, if you know what I mean. Party on! You, Drake, Hannah, and Liam, leave the line. We will never speak of this again. A sure thing, bruh. Hannah, shut up. But as you approach the bar, several partiers surround it demanding drinks. Searching the bar will be challenging with all these people around him. One of us could crawl under and nobody would notice. Thanks for volunteering, Drake. Or I can spare you a date with a dirty floorboard by uh, using my old waitress skills. We'll give you a cover to get to the bar. He pushes his way into the crowd, sauntering up to the furthest end of the bar and hails a bartender. Excuse me, my good bra. Bartender distracted at the far end of the bar, you sneak behind the others, and, and, and one of the patrons approaches you. Hey, you were just at the pool. What are you doing back here? I'm... Helping the busy bartender. The staff heard the bar was busy, so sent an emergency request for backup. Right on, bruh. It's good to help people. Oh, it sure is. Speaking of, here's a can of beer on the house. Enjoy the party. Righteous, bruh. Bruh. Man accepts the drink and leaves. You duck down beneath the bar and start searching its cabinets. Now, if I were Godfrey, where would I store my evidence against my former ally? You feel along the bottom of the bar's drawers until you reach one that feels different from the others. It's hollow. Lifting up, you find a hard drive underneath. That's the hard drive? That looks like a giant PC with one fan on it. I'm getting good at this. You grab the device, stand back, and see Maxwell coming Godfrey towards the bar with a crowd of people chasing after them. Hey, bros, I rescued Godfrey, but there's a bit of a situation. Those two broke the conga line! A crowd of angry partiers surrounds the tiki bar. Not cool, brah! Riley, I hope you finished your search. I got the hard drive, let's go. You hop over the bar, dash around the pool with your friends, and the crowd of partiers chase after you. Can we go back to prison now? Only once we're out of here. But, as you near the exit, a bra jumps out of the pool and blocks your way. Bruh! Oh my god, I'm gonna punch you in the face so goddamn hard, your mother's gonna feel it. Push him back into the pool. 
As the man reaches out, you throw your shoulder into him, sending him tumbling into the pool with a splash. Be a shame if he hit his head on a rock. Cowabunga. Bruh! Mm, nice move. Don't they know I'm the queen of parties? Reach. You escape the resort and return to your plane as the sun sets below the horizon. Inside, your friends quickly change out of their beach disguises. Once they've changed, you plug the hard drive in a laptop, and Godfrey types in a few passcodes. There, I should get you past the encryptions. Inside, you find decades worth of evidence, from documents and pictures to bank transfers and snippets of recordings. He spent his comatose ears supporting nearly every major coup against the crown. So killing my mother was just one in a long line of betrayals. There's a lot to sift through here, but some of these transactions, it looks like he helped fund the Navrakis coup led by Olivia's parents. We should see if he has, uh, was helping Anton and the Sons of Earth, too. I already knew my dad was bad, but somehow it keeps getting worse. Oh, Bartholomew was always a busy bum man. Godfrey, you knew about all of this. You allowed this turmoil to happen. Codionia needed change. Sometimes turmoil is the only way. It's not too different from the change brought by the daughter of New York waitress becoming the royal heir. Except the murder part. Let's take through as much as we can. We need to have a clear evidence to pin on Bartholomew when we land in Cordonia. Isn't the entire hard drive full of evidence and you need clear evidence? Oh, we'll have plenty to pin on him, all right. All of Cordonia will know the region elects crimes. We're going to crash this coronation hard. You have the proof you need to take down Bartholomew, but can you stop him in time to find out in the next chapter? Does it really matter? No offense, but he's regent elect. If you bring apart, uh, like, crimes of high treason, like kings, queens, presidents, have all been taken down by such evidence in the past. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Moving on. Oh, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like the video if you did enjoy. Also, consider sharing the video and the channel. It's greatly appreciated trying to grow this wonderful community we have. Which, speaking of which, are you a part of it? The subscribe button is free. This isn't like Twitch where you subscribe for money. The subscribe button is free. It lets you be a part of this fabulous community and join our crew. Again, it's free. Make sure to just hit the bell icon, too, so you receive notifications of when content goes live. It's just that simple. Once again, thank you all for tuning in. Love your beautiful faces, and I will catch you all in the next video. Peace out.